you have your Bibles, John chapter 17, verse 11. Now, I had no, that's my fault, excuse me. <laughs> Just got the microphone on. All right, here we go. Uh, John 17, cha uh, chapter 17, verse 11. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you have given me I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Father, open your word to us today by your Holy Spirit. We need to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, due to the stay-at-home order uh, during this coronavirus pandemic, uh, we have all, uh, more than normal, been separated from each other, at least physically. We can't gather together as a church family. It's only Brett and I here this morning. Uh, many of you have not been able to uh, be with your grandkids or your other loved ones. And uh, the reason, of course, for all this social distancing is to keep us safe. Um, we want to be physically safe and medically secure uh, from this deadly virus, and, and so we are complying with uh, those recommendations that have come down from the experts. Separation is not easy. <laughs> hasn't been easy for me, probably hasn't been easy for you either. Um, separation is not easy, and security is essential. And Jesus knows that. Separation is not easy, and security is essential. Jesus knows that. Jesus, here in John 17, is about to depart physically from his disciples as he goes to the cross, where he will suffer and die, where he will then be buried and raised from the dead on the third day. After that, he will appear to his disciples over the period of about 40 days, and then he will ascend into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And so he will say several times, and has said several times, this night as he's been teaching his disciples and praying for his disciples, that he is returning to the Father, that he is going to the Father, and that includes his death, burial, resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. And so Jesus is about to be physically separated from his disciples. And he has spent this evening, of course, preparing his disciples for that very thing. He's been encouraging them from chapter 13 through chapter 16. Uh, he has been uh, giving them all kinds of precious promises and, and all kinds of teaching about his going away and about the sending of the Holy Spirit and about the peace and the joy that would come to them uh, after he leaves because the Holy Spirit will come. And now as we come to John chapter 17, he go, Jesus goes before the Father in prayer. And we find in his prayer those same two themes that you and I are dealing with even today. 
the themes of separation and security. He prays for, in, in verses 1 through 5, we've already looked at, Jesus prays for himself. Uh, he prays that he would be glorified so that the Father would be glorified. Then, in, starting in verse 6, going through verse 19, he prays for his disciples, the 11 men who are there with him uh, that night. He prays that, that, they would, that the Father would keep them secure, sanctifying them by his word. We're going to look at part of that today. And then finally, in the latter part of the chapter, starting in verse 20 and going through the end of the chapter, Jesus is going to pray for all believers. He's, in fact, he says in verse 20, those who will believe because of the word of the disciples that he's praying for them, that are with him. And so uh, this prayer really includes all of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, his church. And so he prays for his church that they would be unified in love as a witness to the world. Now, Jesus is praying that he would be glorified and through his glory that we all would be glorified so that through that, God would be glorified. That's really the gist of the whole prayer that Jesus is praying here in John 17. Now, as we focus today on verses 9, uh, 11 through 19, actually, we're not going to get all the way through 19. Uh, I had planned to do that. We're going to stop at verse 16. We're going to do 17 through 19 next time. But uh, in this section, Jesus is praying primarily one request for his disciples. There's a lot of, of, of prayer in there. But the request is one simple thing, and it is this, Father, keep them. Father, keep them. He's asking the Father to keep his disciples secure. Look at verse 11. Now I, Jesus says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So Jesus prays that the Father would keep them. That word keep is a key word here in this section of the prayer. Jesus uses it five times in these verses. The word keep there means to attend to carefully, to take care of, to guard. And so this keeping, Jesus says, was done by himself. It was done by Jesus, the Lord, while he was with his disciples. Look at verse 12. He says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Whom you have given me, I have kept. So Jesus had been doing that work of protection and of keeping and of guarding his disciples while he was here with them physically. But now Jesus is returning to the Father. And in many ways, the physical presence of Jesus was a wall and a shield for the disciples. Jesus himself took the brunt of the world's hatred and opposition. So the, and the disciples just kind of felt that. But Jesus took it all upon himself. But that would change when Jesus left and went back to the Father. When Jesus returns to the Father, when Jesus leaves, he reminded them back in chapter 15, verse 20, he said, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. He said, If the world hates you, remember it hated me First, And so Jesus is no longer in the world to keep them, to guard them, to protect them. And so he asked the Father to do that for them. That's Jesus' request. Father, keep them. And so Jesus wants the same because he's praying 
this not just for those 11 men, but as we'll see later in the prayer, he's praying this for all believers. Jesus wants the same for us. And here's the truth I want you to grasp today. If you belong to Jesus, he will keep you. He will guard you. He will keep you secure. And the keeping of the disciples and us has several facets in these verses. And the first of these is this. Number one, the Father keeps us spiritually secure. The Father keeps us spiritually secure. You see, our Lord had already spoken to his disciples concerning the frailty of their loyalty that night. They were having trouble with that. He had told them in chapter 16, verse 32, he said, Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. All of these 11 men who are with Jesus that night would fall away. That very night. They would abandon Jesus. They would scatter. Uh, the scripture says he will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And that's exactly what happened. They would abandon him and some would even deny him. And so he, he asks the father to keep them. Listen, who among us has not done the same thing as these disciples in the face of the world's hatred and opposition? So many times that I've failed, failed to speak up when, and, and, and I remained silent when I should have spoke, failed to uh, to love like, like uh, the Lord was wanting me to fail to give of myself and, and, and even denied my Lord by the things I said or the things that I've done. Listen, all of us, just like these disciples, are frail. We are weak in ourselves. But listen, here's the good news. Praise God. Our security does not rest on us. It doesn't depend on us. It depends on God. You see, Jesus prays here, Holy Father, keep through your name those given me. See, our security is founded on the name of the Lord our God. When it speaks about the name of God, it's speaking about the nature of God, the character of God. It, God's name represents everything that he is, his attributes, his person, his eternal nature. And so God keeps his own through his name, by his power, by his person, by his nature, by his character, because of who he is. God keeps his own. It is God's eternal power that keeps us. And God's eternal power is stronger than our momentary failings and our momentary lapses. Isn't that good news? Keeping is God's work. We saw back in chapter 15 that abiding is, is what we do. You know, we have God's word abiding in us as we, as we study and, and love God's word and it gets into us and, the, and Christ abides in us, but we must abide in him, remain in him, stay close to him. We do that through his word and through prayer and through loving and serving him and worshiping him and we, we abide in him. That's our part, but God's part is the keeping. We don't have to keep ourselves. God keeps us. And so Jesus is praying here for our eternal spiritual security. Not just temporary safety. He's praying for our eternal security. He says there, those whom you have given me, I have kept, verse 12 here, and none of them is lost. You see, their eternal life 
is secure because the Father gave them to the Son. We saw that back up in, cha in, in chapter 17, verses 2 and 3. That he gives to them eternal life. And eternal life is this relationship with God. And we have that eternal life because the Father gave us to the Son. Our eternal life is secure because God is the one who keeps us. How does he do that? Through the name of the Holy Father. Their eternal life is secure because the Father gave them to the Son. Their eternal life is secure because Jesus has kept them and will not lose them. Brett just read for us that portion out of John chapter 10 where Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And when we get to the end of verse 12, when we find Judas there, Judas is not an exception to that rule. Our Lord did not fail to keep Judas. He never had him. Jesus said that Judas here was the son of perdition. Verse 12. It wasn't that Jesus lost him. It's that Judas was never saved. We saw that back in chapter 13, verses 10 and 11. 10 and 11, where, where Christ had said that they were, they were clean, the disciples, but not all of you, he said, for he was speaking about Judas. In John chapter 6, verse 64, it says that the, the Lord knew those who did not believe and who would betray him. You see, Judas... His destruction was a result of his sin and his unbelief as well as the fulfillment of Scripture, as it says here in verse 12. So how do I know my salvation is secure? Listen, think about it this way. If Jesus prayed that we would be kept by the Father, eternally secure, don't you think the Father is going to answer that prayer? What better security could you have than the prayer of the Lord himself asking the Father to keep us and the Father always answers Jesus' prayers? We are eternally secure. And so the Father keeps us spiritually secure. Second, we see that the Father keeps us uh, in his keeping us, that results in joy. The Father's keeping gives us joy. Here, verses 13 and 14. First, verse 13, he says, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. You know, everything that Jesus said to them that night and prayed for them that night, he says, mm -hmm. These things I speak, those things that he spoke in teaching them in verses thir in chapters 13 through 16, those things that he's praying for them here in chapter 17, all of that was to result in giving these disciples and us joy. It's, it's not a joy that comes from their circumstances. It's his joy. Did you see that? He says that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. It's Jesus' joy that fills us. The gospel song, I love the old gospel song that says, This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Praise God. Listen. The world will try to take away your joy. Life is hard. Life is difficult. And Jesus prays here in verse 14, knowing that. He says, I have given them, these disciples, your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Jesus says the world hates them. The world's going to be hard against them. 
But the good news is they're not of the world. Just as Jesus is not of the world. The consequence, of course, of that is that the world is going to hate and oppose them because they're not of it. The Father's keeping us, though, gives us joy in the face of that opposition, in the face of that hatred from the world. Listen, eternal security, knowing that God keeps us for eternal life, brings joy. I think about it this way. How in the world could I ever have joy in my Christian life? How could I, could I be joyful in the nation if I were constantly worried about losing it? If there was something that I could do that would just mess it up, I guarantee you if there was something I could do that could mess it up, it would have been done a long time ago and I would have lost it for good. But the truth is, God keeps us. And what joy that brings. Think about it. There is absolutely no failing, no lack of sin, nothing, no forces anywhere else that can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise God. The Father's keeping gives us joy. Amen? Listen, we see that the Father keeps us secure. Second, that the, that security gives us joy. And third, the Father protects us against the attacks of Satan. The Father protects us against the attacks of Satan. Look at verse 15. Jesus says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you, you should keep them from the evil one. Keep them, he says, from the evil one. Sounds a lot like what Jesus taught us to pray. In Luke chapter 11 and in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus taught what we call the Lord's Prayer. I think John 17 is really the Lord's Prayer, what he taught uh, the, us that starts with our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's really the disciples' prayer. It's the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. It's the prayer that becomes a model, a pattern for us to pray. I've been teaching on that on Wednesday nights. And uh, if you want to go back and look at some of those teachings, I encourage you to do that. But, but that's the model prayer that the Lord is, has given us. But in that model prayer, Jesus taught us to pray that very same way, didn't he? He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one deliver us from the evil one. and so Jesus is praying that same thing here he says that you should keep them from the evil one and that protection from Satan does not come from God removing us from the world it doesn't come from us removing ourselves from the world. As if, if we just uh, went and, and lived in a monastery somewhere and kept ourselves isolated from the rest of the world and the rest of society, that that would keep us from the attacks of Satan. You all have been sheltering and, and staying in and staying away from a lot of the rest of the, the world. How many of you... You know, it hadn't happened for me. How many of you have not had any attacks from Satan? No temptations. Nothing has harmed you or, or come against you in these last few weeks. Well, it hadn't happened. I can tell you those things are just as real. It's, it's, it's not that we are to be taken out of the world. It's that we are to not be of the world. He says that they were be protected from the evil one. So Jesus doesn't pray that we should be taken out of the world. He, he, we have to stay in the world. We're going to see that next time uh, as we get to verse 18. It's because Jesus has a mission for us to accomplish. And we'll, we're going to see that as we get to those verses. But that's for next time. Here, our Lord's Prayer does not guarantee that Satan will not attack us. He will. 
You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11, Paul urges us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He says, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We are in a spiritual battle and the devil will be always trying to, to fight against us. Uh, in that same chapter, he talks about the fiery darts of the evil one, of, of Satan, that comes against us. And we're to, we're to protect ourselves with the shield of faith, this full of God. And so we know that the, Satan will attack us. First Peter, Peter writes in First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And then he says, resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You know, if we're in the world, we're going to experience the attacks of the evil one. What Jesus is praying for is not that we wouldn't would not be attacked, but that we would be able to stand through that attack, that he would keep us, that he would protect us, that we would be able to endure it and come through victorious in that trial. He said the world will hate us because it hated Christ. And because, as 1 John chapter 5, verse 19 says, the whole world is the sway of the wicked one. Satan will attack. The world will hate. Believers will, uh, will be persecuted. But listen, we will be preserved, kept by God through it all. God doesn't promise that we will avoid the testing, but that we will come forth as gold. Well, why will we endure like this? Jesus prays in verse 16. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. You see, we belong to God the same way that Jesus did. He's comparing us to himself. Just as he is not of the world, if we are in Christ, we are not of the world. We are of Christ. We belong to God. We've been purchased with, with the blood of his son, and we belong to him. We are not our own we were bought with a price, and therefore we're to glorify God with everything that we are. If we were left in the world on our own, we would be crushed under the fierce power of Satan and this corrupt, fallen world. But listen, we're not left on our own. We are in Christ, and he keeps us secure. We have a story in the Bible that where God wanted to prove to Satan that he could not overthrow the faith of a believer. And so God let Satan go after a man named Job. He was the most virtuous, the most righteous man uh, during his time on the earth. And Satan threw everything he had at Job. He killed his children. He took his possessions. He destroyed his health and gave him a nagging wife. And you remember the rest of the story, don't you? Satan had come to God and he had said, the only reason that Job is faithful to you, God, is because you bless him. You've given him all these things, these children, these possessions, this wealth, and all these things. You bless him, God. That's why he worships you. And Satan says, take all that away, and he will curse you to your face, God. But God proved. God proved that he keeps those who belong to him. Even though Job didn't understand why all this evil came upon him, he questioned it, he, he didn't know why, it, it hurt him deeply, and, and he struggled with it, and yet Job did not forsake the Lord. He stood firm in his faith. 
He said this in Job 121. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, true saving faith cannot be broken even by Satan. That's what Jesus is saying here. That's what he's praying for. That we would not be overthrown by Satan. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus says to Peter, this is that same night that Jesus prays this prayer. Jesus had said this to Peter in Luke 22. He said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you like wheat. Well, did, did Jesus allow Satan to sift Peter like wheat? Yes, he did. You know, Peter is, is going to really go through it late, later on this night. He's, he's going to run like the other disciples. He's going to deny his Lord three times before the cock crows, just as Jesus had predicted to him. It, it will shake his faith, but it will not ruin his faith. It will not destroy it. Why? Because Jesus prayed for him. Because Jesus does the keeping. After, after Jesus had told Peter that you know, Satan had asked to sift him like wheat, Jesus said this to Peter. He said, but I have prayed for you. That your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus knew that Peter would, would be kept. He knew that he would be secure. He knew that his faith would not fail. He knew that he would return to Jesus because Jesus is going to keep him. The Father is going to keep him because the Father loses none that belong to him. Jesus kept Peter secure in his salvation by faith, and he does the same for you. Listen. God called you to Christ. He didn't give you a temporary salvation. He gave you eternal life. He gave you a relationship with God that lasts for nothing. Satan himself gets away from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we close today, let me just ask you. Have you received God's gift of eternal life? Do you understand that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for your sins on the cross? Have you come to repent of your sins, to turn away from your life of rebellion and uh, against God? Have you confessed Jesus as Lord in your life? Listen, if you will do that now, Jesus will save you and give to you eternal life. All that come to me, I will not cast out. He receives all who come to him. He'll wash away your sin. He'll accept you as a child of God. He'll clothe you in his own righteousness. And he will keep you for. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who keeps us forever. Who prayed that we would be kept by you, Father, and, and no one is stronger than you are. No one can snatch us out of your hand. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you that, that you keep us secure in our salvation and, and what joy that gives us even in the midst of the attacks of this world. We love you, Lord. Lord, I pray these things in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.